Oh, it's now. Welcome into the season finale of the Power Hour. I am Steve, along with the Urban Sensation C Red. And tonight we are doing something that, you know what, we probably should have done a long, long time ago. You see a bunch of people on screen tonight. These are the people that work the hardest at the wrestling shows. You got guys jumping off turnbuckles and you got guys taking chair shots, but they're not working half as hard as these people. These are the people that make everybody look good, that make every magic moment happen. Any moment you see on social media, any moment you see on Amazon Prime, these folks are responsible for making us look good. And without them, we aren't half of what we try to be. So these are the camera people, whether they're photography, videography, these are the people that make all the promotions you love tick. And I'm going to introduce each one of them one by one. And uh, you give me, we're going to, we're going to kind of go through who they are and we're going to go through, you know, what they're doing and what they're doing and why. So let's start with Nick up in the top there, or at least from my vantage point, he's up. Nick is a proprietor of camera guy gimmick. How you doing, Nick? I'm doing well. You are doing well, especially with those pictures from Saturday night. I was feeling like a you know, Jedi there for about eight seconds before I got beat up. And then we are going to go to Missy, who is take action photography. She is out at CCW taking some damn fine pictures. She posted about 560 pics of the show <laughs> we did on June 12th, and they were all fantastic. Even managed to make C Red look good, which is, you know. Don't hate because I got the win. Don't hate. Don't hate. It does not look good on you. And then we got Big D, Derek, ring film dude, CSW's uh, videography man, the man that makes all the memes, that makes all the little vignettes, uh, and uh, made an outstanding birthday tribute to me last year, which uh, you know I watch all the damn time because I'm vain and stuff. Uh, so we love Derek. Derek, it's good to see you. And Derek, I can't hear you. Derek's mic is not on. Derek's mic is not on. Somebody call Derek's mic. There, he there is. you go. All, All right. right. Let me hear that bass. There we go. There you go. In. All right. And then, of course, last but certainly not least, it is the uh, the deity of CCW videography, the man that somehow made me look good on Amazon Prime, uh, although he took some pretty compromising uh, videography of uh, what happened at the end of this past show. So we're going to not talk about that at all. Why? Uh, Xavier Camacho of Pro Wrestling Shoots. What's up, Xavier? How's it going, Steve? How's it going, c Red and everybody else? Good to see you guys today. What's all up, right. Xavier? <laughs> I, I appreciate all that you do. And you thank you that. and Misty for so much capturing all of my glory <laughs> on June 12th. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much. And especially you, Xavier, because I heard you caught one hell of an ass whooping at the end. Of the <laughs> so I can't wait to see that on Amazon Prime. Oh, soon enough, soon enough. Hopefully this weekend, I think everything should be good and ready to go. All right. So all of you people uh, play a dramatic role in, in both my life and C-Red's life in the companies that we work for. Uh, but you work for a great many companies. So I'm going to start with uh, Nick from Camera Guy Gimmick. Uh, Nick, what are all the promotions you work for? You work for quite a few. Um, At the moment, I work for... AAW Pro, I work for Warrior Wrestling, I work for Chicago Style Wrestling, um, and I just started doing Lucha Libre Total. Um, I've done stuff with Mission Pro Wrestling with Thunder Rosa in Texas. Uh, that's pretty much all I do now. Now that's a that's a pretty impressive resume of companies to work for. Uh, obviously, Warrior Wrestling, uh, th their legend is is off the chart right now, and AAW is doing special things. And uh, obviously, CSW near and dear to my heart. And you know, working in Texas with Thunder Rosa, you know that kind of goes without saying as being totally badass. How did you get into this? How did how did you become Camera Guy Gimmick? How does this how did this all come about? Oh man. There's well, always a story. Just, There's always an origin story. You got bit by a yeah. radioactive spire, a vial of super soldier serum. There's always an origin story. It's actually kind of funny because, um, so like I, 
have always been good with like Photoshop and like um, that aspect of like being artsy. Um, but I never like really dabbled in photography or videography or anything like that until I met this kid. Um, his name was Jeff and he was a videographer. He did music videos. And I was like, I could do that. Like if he could do that, I could do that. So I picked up a camera and I started doing music videos like in 2016, 2017. That's how I started. And then I started doing photography. Like I figured out that that was not for me. Like videography in general is just not my thing. So I dropped that, started doing strictly photography, um, concert photography. I got an internship with House of Blues. I was doing a lot of stuff in Chicago. Um, and then I got an email from Steve asking me to do Warrior 6, which was in which was the day after All Out or the day before All Out, the 2019, the first one. Um, and that was the first wrestling thing I ever did. Uh, and after that, I just decided, like, no, I'm going to do this full time instead because I grew up a wrestling fan. And, um, you know, when I got into photography, I wasn't watching the product at the time because at the time it was really only WWE or New Japan if, like, you went on the Internet and stuff like that, which I wasn't doing. So really like that kind of invigorated like me to get back into like watching the product. And like luckily AEW had was starting at that time and the Indies were really hot in 2019. And even before that, but like I said, like I didn't even know like who Kyle O'Reilly was, you know what I mean? Cause I was so out of the loop that for so long that I was like completely removed from the scene. But once I started doing the stuff with warrior, um, it just literally like changed everything. And now I'm, I literally like obviously do all the indie promotions in Chicago or most of them anyway, not all of them, but I know who people are now and I am, you know, familiar with the scene. It's just, it's a complete turnaround from what it was, but that's how it started. I started with music videos and now I do this. So, you know, well, that's an amazing transformation and we, we see all the work you do and it is phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to go to Missy next. Missy, same question. Uh, how did you get, how, how did you become uh, take action photography? Where does it come from? How did it work? How did you get into this? Um, pretty much started as I've been a huge wrestling fan, like my entire life. I have a big brother. He's big on watching Hogan and Warrior. So I'm in diapers watching them. Um, and honestly, uh, Mick Foley was doing a meet and greet and baseball show or after a baseball show for a wrestling thing and I'm like I gotta see Nick fully done so gathered my family we went to that and my son ended up winning tickets to a following wrestling indie show so we started going to that and I brought my camera like okay it'd be really cool to get some shots and remember all that and um I had a couple of the wrestlers and managers you know talk to me backstage like hey you you know, you're getting some really good shots, you should really think about pursuing it a little bit more than just sitting in the stands with it. So um, actually I had a friend who's a manager and rep in the business that invited me out to one of his shows and said, hey, come check us out and whatnot. And started going to those shows, he introduced me to the owner and they said, come shoot for us. And next thing you know, that's that's what I do. <laughs> How many promotions do you work for? I mean, obviously we're most familiar with your work uh, at Chicagoland Championship Wrestling. So many great photos uh, from both our October and June shows. Uh, do you work at other promotions as well? I do. Um, I do Rocket Pro Wrestling based in Joliet, Illinois. Oh, we love Bill. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, and then the rest are based in the Michiana area, EHF based in South Bend, uh, GLWA based in Coloma, Michigan. I've shot for RCW also in South Bend, UHF, which is in South Bend, um, FWF in Warsaw, and that's about it right now. <laughs> That's a pretty impressive list unto itself. And, you know, that's a, you're going, you're going deep in Indiana. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool indeed. Uh, Derek, you, you're more of a video guy than you are a photographer. At least it's been my experience. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I too have an iPhone, but I've never seen the wizardry captured on an iPhone like I've seen you do. I mean, you have contraptions and things and, and you take some really spectacular footage. Uh, how did you get into it? And, and how do you do what you do with just a, a smartphone device? Oh, I got into it actually just by, you know, having a old a former CSW wrestler reached out to me after he saw me post a video of his on his Facebook page. He messaged me asking if I could, you know, shoot for the company. And actually my first show was CSW season premiere. So that was pretty much the unknown debut of Ring Film Dude. I didn't have a name at the time. I was using his equipment. Angles were shaky. Then along, then later down the line, I started using the iPhone. Now I'm just starting now, so I really didn't have much money to get a nice camera or anything, but I did get myself a phone gimbal, got myself another rig with lights and a microphone. And ever since then, I've just been studying former footage that I've been doing, seeing what I've been doing wrong, see what I can, you know, improve on. And also looking at other inspirations, like you have Xavier here with uh, Pro Wrestling Shoots, and he was actually one of the first videographers I've noticed on Facebook, and I always, always give him his props for his excellent work. Thank you, bro. Actually, kind of an inspiration, man, seriously. Like, you, along with Wrestling with Unicorns, you guys are pretty awesome in my book. Damn, thank you. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Derek, you, you, I know you were, obviously, CSW is where I know you best, uh, but I've seen you put your body in harm's way at other promotions. <laughs> what are some of the other ones that you work at? Well, currently, besides CSW, I do live stream roaming camera for Galley Lucha. And yeah, that's probably the place where I put my body on the line the most. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you, you can't dodge a Lucha if they're already in your face flying. This is probably <laughs> true. I also, I've also seen some pretty spectacular work uh, done at a little company called Proving Grounds Wrestling. <laughs> Oh, Proving Grounds Wrestling. That's actually a YouTube wrestling show that I, along with um, Axel Rico and a couple of other students from CSW, we started together amidst the pandemic because, well, there was nothing going on. Everything shut down. So we wanted to do something to entertain everybody. And we're actually almost finished with the first season. I mean, Proving Grounds Mania is coming up on YouTube. I just cut, just cut a promo for it this afternoon. So uh, <laughs> Proving Ground Mania coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. And that brings us to Pro Rassel and Shoots, and that would be Xavier Camacho. Now, I have a special relationship with Xavier Camacho because uh, unbeknownst to many people, uh, the first CCW show, the audio was screwed up from the live event. So Joey Roth and I had to go to Xavier Camacho's basement and essentially re-record everything uh, to be in sync with, with the, the program. And a lot of people have said to me, God, it sounds like you guys are there. We can't tell. And I have to believe that is 100% your fault to make it sound as good as it did. Plus the, the footage on Amazon Prime is, uh, is, is pro quality. So uh, if, in case I haven't thanked you, <laughs> you made us all look awfully good on Amazon Prime, and we're looking. Hey, brother. We're looking no, for yeah, the next one too. Uh, how Xavier, did you how Xavier, did you just tell the truth. His face broke your mic. Ah, like that. <laughs> just, just tell like, it. Just it, we, we just, put it on the Bluetooth speaker and smoke. Right. I mean, I get it. Don't I get it. it. Xavier. So then you needed to go and and buy a new one. This one, you know, Steve face proof. I get it, you know, but no, seriously, you did a, uh, I heard about the incident and I kind of freaked out because it was like, okay, so what happens now? Like, uh, does the show go on? Uh, are we airing this without, <laughs> you know, uh, audio? And then Steve told me he had to uh, go back and, reshoot so when you look back at that very first episode you can't tell that um there's there's minor things again his mouth is moving at some point <laughs> <That's laughs> right that's a if problem. you're looking for it though right like if you're looking for it right you, you if you're see. looking for it right but <laughs> otherwise i mean oh my god you you know uh you guys recreated which 
I have to be honest, is so hard. And I commend you because to uh, sync that magic again was was beautiful. So uh, thank you uh, for the hard work. Uh, yeah. Just in, and I'm not gonna lie, I, you made a lot of people's dreams. I think become a reality. Uh, not everybody can say that they were on Amazon Prime. Uh, so you know, for people to click on that and say, "Hey." here I am, you know, but it was your uh, dedication and work, you know, that put us there, you know, so thank you. Uh, I thank you, but dude, where'd you come from? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, well, yeah, so I mean, did you I, come from, you know, here from Chicago, here from Chicago, uh, I uh, started like doing video stuff back like in high school with my buddies, we just like film skateboarding and just like skits of like stuff we thought were funny. So we like put that on for like our peers and uh, and that's really how we taught ourselves how to like film and edit anything. We would just like rip stuff off Pirate Bay, like the programs and just learn how to do everything. And, and you know, we, we figured it out. Then I went, uh, I went away to school and in, to Indiana, uh, to DePaul University out there. And I was there, I studied communications with a focus in media, but like, n and nowhere did I really ever think I would do anything with wrestling. I've always liked wrestling though. Like even in high school, like I was like very vocal about liking wrestling. We had like a thing, like a, a world championship, like the world heavyweight championship that would be uh, passed around like homerooms based off of highest GPA and stuff. But like I would just wear it and like they'd be like, oh, just let them wear it, whatever. Like eventually it fell off after like a year. So it was just like my belt at the school for some reason. They ended up giving it to me and stuff like I was like known as a wrestling guy. So like I've always just been open about liking it. And then um. When I uh, graduated, came back to Chicago, didn't really like pursue anything too much with video other than like short film projects with those same friends that I was doing stuff before with. And from there, we were just getting that spark back. Like, oh man, this is fun. Like I like being behind the camera, sometimes in front of it. My buddy, uh, my best friend, Alex was in film school. He just graduated that, but uh, I helped him with some projects there. And it really had me thinking like, man, like I want to do stuff like this, but um. I didn't know exactly how to. So I would just kind of like see what he was doing, learn from him. I was uh, just thinking about like where I can like go in Chicago, like live events. And then I think the first thing I saw was Berwyn Championship Wrestling out at the Berwyn Eagles Club. And I just went, uh, I saw like uh, the guys hanging out by the bar who looked like they were in charge. So I asked them like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Are you guys uh, working here? They said they were the owners. I asked if it was okay to take like some pics and some videos. They said, sure. And I was just doing that by ringside, just by myself, just for fun, because I had like like doing camera stuff. It looked cool. They liked it. Asked me to come back and I record their show. I had never done it before, but I've watched enough wrestling to where I was like, it seems like it just like makes sense. Like production wise, I've been on a couple sets to know like what to do and like how to edit and how to shoot. So I was like, this shouldn't be too hard as long as I can like have someone like at the hard cam to like make sure it doesn't fall over or stays like you know on the ring in case someone knocks it over or whatever so then I just did that show and from there just opportunities started opening up like people reaching out to me uh then like meeting uh Matt Nix from Freelance Wrestling I was working at Pro Wrestling Tees for a little while and being like good friends with Nick there he was uh, able to hook me up with doing interviews at Freelance so I do that for them uh, right now they're gonna come back soon but they're uh, hyping up their return show but the, during the pandemic, I've been able to do a couple other places like Chicagoland Championship and um, AAW also. So my buddy over here is a photographer, Nick, and I'm uh, doing a ring cam. So I'll do like the entrances and then I also come out uh, by the ring and we have the headsets and been able to work there has also been really beneficial because like learning uh, the production side and how they set up everything, how they uh, have their monitors set up for editing and commentary, like soaking up all that knowledge kind of helped me like apply that to like the Chicago land championship wrestling stuff. So just kind of taking in knowledge from everywhere and just like talking to people and just studying like Derek said too, just like the uh, unicorns guys, uh, Martin, I learned a lot from him, just like asking questions, just talking and just watching a lot of our own footage just to see like what you can do better in a way. And from like, that's kind of just what I've been doing and everything's been pretty smooth so far. I've had some bumps like in the beginning. I learned the hard way. You gotta like for sure talk to the 
promoters talk to the people in charge because I was I I made my first mistake at AAW where like I just kind of showed up with the camera and got a little ballsy but like in my defense I was trying to go for like a Paul Heyman attitude because I read his book where he talked about just kind of showing up with the camera and when he would do that he would just kind of act like he was there like he was supposed to be there and then like eventually they just let him come but like they already had their family crew so they're like wait a second who's this new guy <laughs> so then they ended up talking to me like hey don't do that blah 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 so but it was okay though now I work for them so it comes full circle but uh just being able to learn from everything from like the the ups and the downs and just taking the knowledge from everybody just trying to connect with people and learn and just get to make some good friends in this it's, it's been a fun time so far well before steve goes on his rant <laughs> um i want to applaud you guys and gal um you um you guys are awesome thank you uh you guys make us look so good and honestly you capture I live life now by moments I don't think about next week next year I, I live by moments you guys take those moments and solidify those moments until technology changes and I mean we know technology is forever changing but whether it's a still picture or a video, you guys capture those moments. And me being honest, I have grandsons. Now, will they, well, they've come to shows, but again, they're babies and don't understand what I'm doing. Okay, great, whatever. But at some point in their life, I'll be able to take what you guys do and show it to them. And to me, that's the, that's the biggest honor because you can tell a story and after a while people start thinking, oh yeah, okay, whatever. But for me, I can sit them down and say, hey, look at these pictures. Hey, look at these videos. And they know that their grandfather, what his love in life is. So I applaud all of you. And you fucking got me crying. Oh. You made C Red cry. I've been trying for <laughs> I've been trying for 12 months to make him cry. And now you guys what? ever. <laughs> so I thank you guys because uh Steve, I think, said it best on his post. A lot of times what you guys do is a thankless job. You guys don't get enough credit. And you guys should get all the credit in the world. Because it's funny, you're the guys. Um, it's funny, it was already brought up, working at Galley, uh, you're in the way of a luchador, <laughs> you know. But the crazy part is every time you guys are taking pictures and taking video, you're you're putting your body out there on the line as well. You're trying to capture the perfect shot, the perfect angle. And uh, I'll just use Marche. Here's Marche diving over the top rope, Undertaker style. And you're like, what the hell? I didn't know that was <laughs> happening. Now you got to move out the way, you know, <laughs> And and honestly, there's some guys that won't tell you to move. You know, um, I've had, and here's the crazy part: all four of you are so professional. Because I've either there worked, are five of them. I mean, it's one, two, three. It's four. What are you talking about? You don't take. Oh, there's this. four. What Sorry. the? Stop drinking. <laughs> Shit. Just try to keep you. Try to keep you honest, Red. Yeah, people. Sorry, he's been anyway. Um, been hitting the head one too many times. Clearly, mm. I've I've worked that with when people. He gets in a trunk, goddamn it! Uh, hey, can't wait for that footage. I can't. Um, I've been around people that won't move, and that is the most irritating thing in the world. 
when you have and you understand you guys just like we're doing our job you guys are doing your job but you are clearly and not you guys but somebody else is clearly in my way and i need to be at this exact spot they are standing on get the hell out of my way <laughs> and they don't move and then you know then somebody then the promoter is like well what happened during that spot well guess what uh if you tell your video person to get the hell out the way then maybe we could have did it you know but i've seen all of you you guys and girl uh, you guys constantly move. You guys uh, not only protect uh, yourselves, but you protect us. Uh, so again, I just want to uh, thank you guys for all you do. Because again, uh, without you, this is 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 really meaningless, you know. So uh, so I tip my proverbial hat to all of you. And that's the whole point of this whole show is because even though you strive to not be seen, you know, those of us that are there, we see you and we realize how important you are. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to Nick and I'm going to go to him next when I, when I make the next question, you know, I watch Nick set up his stuff and he does a lot of the promotional photos and the still photos, uh, you know, for champions and belt changings and, and things like that. He, you know, puts up the backdrop guys, take pictures and stuff. And, you know, everybody, you know, the, the promoters want everybody to get their picture taken. And, and Nick is out there trying to get everybody to get their picture taken. And it's, it's absolutely bloody thankless work. And you know what, I, let's be honest. And, and I mean this with all, all due respect, when you're working with a group of wrestlers, I mean, you've got some, Every now and again, maybe not all, but there, there's an ego or two in the room. Let's just, let's just call it for what it is. And, you know, you don't always get the respect you deserve. And I, I see it and I don't like it, uh, but it, it does happen. But you guys always maintain, uh, you know, such a great attitude. And, uh, you know, I, I was watching Nick uh, over the course of the weekend and he's, you know, he's doing what he can, uh, you know, venue change, time change. You know, everybody was a little out of sorts at the show and, and Nick was still, you know, doing his work. And, you know, at the end, he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I got everybody. But, you know, it, the point is the, the effort is is 100 percent all the time. You, you never see Nick standing in one place too long. He's he's here. He's there. He's trying to grab somebody or not. And, uh, you know, maybe you guys don't think we see how hard you work and what you do. You know, I see Missy around ringside at, at, at Chicago and uh, you don't ever see Xavier because he's the videographer that's invisible. So, you know, you never see him in the same place twice. And I think he, he's got some kind of teleporting Marvel thing going on where he can go from place to place. And then Derek, you see him because he's a giant man, but then all of a sudden you don't see him. And I wonder how that works. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we see you even though we, you don't want to be seen, we see you and we see you sweat and we see you struggle and, and we see the passion that you bring to the table. And, uh, you know, it, it, believe me, I, we talk about this all the time, you know, uh, amongst each other, you know, how awesome the pictures are. Uh, you know, like I said, I was talking about pictures and this one is from Saturday and I, you know, it's just, it's, it's such an interesting shot because this was right before I was about to get my comeuppance, but I actually look even at least a little bit tough. So, you know, I, I said a picture tells a thousand stories. Uh, you can tell the story that I was fending them off valiantly, or you can tell the story that I was just about to get my ass kicked. The, the, the most important thing is it's a great fucking picture. It's a fantastic action shot of what was going down on Saturday. And there were so many, and that's what Xavier does. And that's what Missy does. I mean, the, the stuff that we see on Amazon prime, it, you know, the, the, it, it's amazing the way it looks when it's done. Uh, Missy puts up 500 photos from, from Chicago and championship and they're all, you know, top notch pro quality. Uh, you know, after a CSW show, Derek spends two weeks giving little one minute clips on Instagram, uh, you know, with different things that happen in a CSW show. And, and, also, and, and, and that's what upsets me. And see, I need Derek to come back. Oh, cause I'd be so upset. Cause he'll give you just enough. 
and I be like, oh, shit. What's next? And then that's the end of the damn clip. I be mad as hell. I'm like, you know, I, I'm like, can I get two minutes? Can I I'm just me? happy. The, the greatest thing that happened to me at that show was that Derek never put out the video clip of Marco dropping me on my face because I'm sure there was nothing attractive about that in any way. Dude, then- when Marche chopped jazz and he was right there. <laughs> and you heard it. And I was like, oh, and I was like, what's next? What's next? Do it again. Do it again. That's the end of the clip. <laughs> Damn it. I need this. And, 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 and it's funny, but I love the way he does it because he'll play a Marche jazz clip. And then I don't know how often you you like send them out, but then he'll play another clip from something else. And then he'll go back to that match and then play a later clip. And I'd be like, damn it. So now I'm sitting here like a crackhead. <laughs> I'm fiending to try to piece together the whole match because I wasn't at the show. I wonder why I see SW. Um, so, you know, but uh, ingenious way. And on my hit, hit, Steve loves stories. Steve loves stories. So our very first show at Chicago Land, and I meet Missy, and she's like, "Hi, I'm Missy. I'll be taking your picture." Now, when she said she was gonna be taking our pictures, I just figured like we had to stand against the backdrop, and everybody just had to pose, and we were done. No. And she took a picture at me at ringside, and I told her, "I said, understand. I ain't never met a camera I don't like." And that's the <laughs> damn truth. And Remember those oh egos I was talking about? <laughs> and th- that's just me, period. Shit, put me on film. Uh, but she just started snapping, and I was like, <laughs> and here, here, here's a little hidden fact. I hate all of y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all why I hate y'all. What? This is a love episode. What the? What? Give it to us. I hate y'all because I can't do what y'all do. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and I'm gonna be honest. So I did go, I did go to school and he I do know me. how he suckered I, me in, is what he did. <laughs> I do know how to take photos. So like I'm a big photo head. Like I love to take pictures. Um and before uh my house burned down, I had a pretty decent camera. Oh no. Um so but the whole when y'all video and y'all edit everything and y'all I hate y'all because <laughs> I have tried my life to try to figure out some of this software I can't so I just say the hell with it I leave it to the professionals because clearly I'm too old to try to figure all that out you got to put this piece here and then put that in, it just don't come out right um so for all of y'all that take a picture, that film anything, I hate you. <laughs> I mean, I can I, can, I take I take it. great stuff on my phone, <laughs> but um, outside of that, uh, and sitting somewhere and putting it together, I don't know how Missy puts up five hundred plus pictures. Because after the first twenty, I'd have been done. I'd be like, uh. I'll email them to you. That's about it. Uh, so See I hate my y'all. A few days. <laughs> I, right, you know, but I, I hate y'all because y'all, and then y'all do quality of work. And I think that's what the four of you, I think that's what makes you guys different. It's not just your work. It's the quality that we have come to know. Absolutely. And, and, and love. Uh, I've seen some people try to take pictures. <laughs> They're I've there. seen I've seen people, you know, like, oh, I could t- I could take the show. And nope. I even like know some the whole time. Nope. Dude, I know some people Dude. and they bring cameras and they have their family and friends record the show. And then you ask to see it, and it's like you got the person next to you in the hot dog. Wait, what? What? what, what? 
Like, right, See, you know, like there are it's a, like it's getting like, really bad. Like, I'll tell a story. So at Warrior Wrestling, because so like the stadium series were outside, right? It's in the rings in the middle of a football field. Yeah, and helicopters um, on a damn field. Right. So damn, people, I'm so the fans, so uh inside, it's supposed to be me, Basil, Ian, which is three count photo. And uh, Brain Buster. Those are the photographers, right? Well, people from the that buy tickets literally start walking up to the ring and taking pictures, and it's getting so bad. I saw people that. Do that. I saw that. Yeah, and what people, are these people and doing? It, it ruins the stream because the stream looks horrible. And like to add on to like C Red, what he was saying, like the whole putting your body on the line thing, like that's not. I've been hit with a door. I've been clotheslined. I've been literally like, so when you don't know oh, what you're true. doing, if you don't know what you're doing and you just go up on the ring and you act like you've done this before, you're going to get fucking smacked in the face or your camera's going to get broken or you're going to get taken out and the re- you're going to get heat from the, from being in the way. Like people don't understand, like, it's more than just having a camera or, or like a video camera that's capable of taking the pictures and, or doing the videos because you need to know the business. Like you need to know how the, to work. And a lot of the times I bet Derek does it. You go to the guys before the match while they're set, while they're going over the match to make sure. And yeah, Missy, you probably do the same thing to see if there's any particular spot that you, I need to make sure I'm in a place to get that shot. And if you don't do that, you can miss, like, for example, on Saturday, Ryan with the pie. Nobody told me that was happening. So I missed it. Nobody. So this guy got pied in the face, right? Either. Yeah, well, this guy got pied in the face, guys. And I didn't get the shot. I got the aftermath. So it was fine, I guess. But, like, you know, got, that's just like, We all got the aftermath, Nick. That the 20 minutes. Oh, the ring. We cleaned the it ring. It took, like. <laughs> It took like 20 minutes to clean up the ring. It was I had to give away a mess. pair of damn glasses to buy time. <laughs> I got pictures of that too. I just didn't send them to you. Uh, <laughs> but you, it's what did who who clotheslined you? Let's go back to that moment. Who clotheslined Manders? You? Manders big ass. <laughs> One called Manders, his big ass, and then Matthew Justice hit me with a door. I was it's, gonna, yeah, it's, the question was, uh, what has been the, the most dangerous moment you've been? And I've seen yours. Was, hey, Probably. Just said he got clothes, like. oh. I don't know, but like, that's not like the Lucha stuff. Like I was, so there was a match with Gringo Loco, Arez, uh, Canis Lupus and Dragon Bane. And it was at Galley, but it was for AAW. And I don't speak Spanish. I took Spanish, but I failed for a semester and that was a part of that was like a period in time where if you failed first semester they dropped your ass second semester so i don't know any spanish i know words but basically like they were doing obviously all these high spots well i'm usually okay with that i can get out of the way and i can read pretty well like what's going on but i had no idea what was coming and this guy did like a springboard like off you know the rope and i I think it was Dragon Bane. Oh, it was Dragon Bane. He went for a moonsault off the top rope, and there's like lines in Galley um, that are like hanging the um, like the set for AAW, right? So like there's wires, and his feet clipped the wire as he was upside down in the air, and he came down, but uh, Black Taurus was there and he caught him, and I kind of caught him because I was also there ready for the shocks. I thought he was gonna go over me, but he like fell on me. And you remember, you remember that Xavier? I think you were there for that. Yeah. Well, if you weren't, there you go. There's a story, and that was probably the most dangerous thing, other than the door, because that was pretty bad. But that was pretty boy, bad. Uh, Missy, I'm interested to hear everybody else's. Missy, all right, Missy, have you ever felt like you were in harm's way? I mean, I know we had a couple of moments at CPW <laughs> where somebody went erroneously flying and almost took out a, a child, from what I hear. Yeah, I was. Um... I was told to move, so I'm like, okay, I know something's going to come, but unfortunately, like before, I touch base with guys and say, hey, tell me your spots. They didn't tell me the spots, so unfortunately, I, I missed the spot, um, but I, I mean, I've been accidentally kicked in the stomach by rocks sliding in to get the count. Uh, I've actually had one uh, 
Let's just reach back to hit, and somehow the, um, the uh, I can't think of the word, the, um, caught my camera, and it got caught in their arm, so they swing back. My camera kind of went back to the middle of the ring. Wow. Um, I've been kicked almost, mm -hmm. um, just, just to get the shot, but <laughs> I mean, I haven't actually gotten hurt, so that's good so far. Well, let's let's not let's uh, not risk things. You got to make sure that you get out of the way of these guys, because uh, you know when they're when they're throwing their bodies around, there's there's an element of reckless abandon that is unsurpassed. Derek, I know I've seen you uh, getting your fair share of scrapes, and I've I've seen those eyes get big a couple of times uh, at various shows. Uh, talk about your. Uh, favorite dangerous moment that you were almost killed and i'm sure marche rocket's got to be part of it <laughs> <laughs> he is the king of collateral damage well it's important to stay far far away from marche rocket when he's in his zone honestly <laughs> but, <laughs> but honestly i gotta say nothing comes close to galley versario 14 i would say probably the whole show it felt like they were coming for me so every <laughs> Every dive out the ring, I had to make sure to get away. And there were times where I nearly didn't make it in and got clipped by my boy, Psycho J. Shout out to you. You almost fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Mortez rolling out the ring really fast. Had to get out the way or else I'm catching the foot to the face. Pretty much that whole show, man. It could be Bandolero flying out the ring. Hell, it could be Axel Rico trying to attack somebody outside the ring. That whole show, that was pretty much my dangerous moment. And sorry for the people on the live stream if I kept taking bumps on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, uh, you know, I it, it's funny the amount of near-death experiences that occur uh, for the camera folks at, at a show. Uh, you know, I, I, I especially we, we had uh, uh, Hades versus uh, Saban Gage a few months ago, and they were just throwing chairs all oh, over yeah. the place. And it's a wonder somebody didn't die or get hurt because they literally just chucking chairs at each other. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, it can be really dangerous. Uh, Xavier, you know, like I said, you have some kind of strange teleportation uh, mutant power where you kind of walk invisible for a while. Uh, how about you? Uh, do you have anything that jumps out of your mind as being a near-death experience? Uh, I, I don't know near-death exactly just yet, so I'm a little lucky there. But I think some of the most like uh, wild moments where like I could have definitely gotten hit if I didn't move out of the way have been at AEW Pro, like uh, doing some of the ringside stuff. Like I have a little clip right here. I was looking for it on my Instagram. I think it's uh, Matthew Justice, and I forgot... The, the band they hit like oh fucking Matthew Justice dude I don't know <laughs> back, he's yeah. one that you gotta stay away from when he's fired up for real People crazy they start throwing doors and like the chairs and no. the ring like what yeah. you're talking about <laughs> no but, yeah uh I remember like, threw uh he threw the other guy I forgot his name he used to come out with Sammy Sammy Callahan but I forgot their name um oh, but, uh, yeah, so he throws him, hits like the what is it called, the guardrail, and it knocks me a bit. But I get back up, nothing crazy. But that's one that I had on on camera that so one of my buddies got. So I was like, oh, cool. So I could post that on Instagram. <laughs> but uh, those have just been some intense moments. But I don't think like um, I haven't gotten hit yet. Like I haven't taken a bump necessarily. So I still I still got my V card on that. So we'll see who pops. Look at Nick shaking his head. <laughs> nice, nice to know that I'm the only one. Let's see who, uh, yeah, who eventually uh, is like Batista bomb or something. <laughs> the crazy part, though, the crazy part <laughs> is like Steve says, and I've been sitting here this whole time and thinking, where the hell was Xavier? <laughs> like, I'm, I go back to my match in June and I'm like, I didn't see him, nice. but I guarantee you his footage. Hey, being 5'4 oh. kind of helps. I'm a little on the short side. It could get around a little quicker. Well, dude. <laughs> but it's still, it's like, I don't, I don't remember that. And then, I swear, the pictures that Missy takes is almost in your face. But I know, I'm like, but she wasn't, was she standing there? <laughs> Where was 
And I guess, again, it's just because you guys are so professional at what you do that, again, you don't try to get in the way. Um, so, again, and that's why I said I appreciate what you guys do, that you're so professional and you understand this craft. Uh, but I don't speak Spanish either, so don't feel bad. Um, <laughs> one, like of, one of our greatest triumphs yet downfalls was with Gringo Loco also. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, he brought a guy this was this was so touch his heyday. And uh, they didn't tell us the guy did not speak English. So they just said it's Gringo Loco and his guy versus Marche and Willie. And literally Oh, not Willie. Come on. Dude, Willie Willie talked, doesn't even speak English. <coughs> Willie talked out the match with this guy for 30 minutes. <laughs> that See, that's that <laughs> that should have been filmed. So nobody told us that he didn't. And then like maybe five minutes before we go out and Marche is like, hey, y'all, let's run through this one more time. And that's when Gringo was like, he doesn't speak English. <laughs> you know, it's like, just green the whole time. Yeah, didn't even know what he was saying. Dude. Really like, <laughs> Dude, the whole match, like, we got yelled at and the whole nine afterwards. It wasn't our fault. We explained that. But it was just like, how you not speak? Never mind. All right. I, I don't speak Spanish, so I guess that's my fault, too. So, you know. <laughs> so I, I thought I, he... I want to know what? what has been, since we talked about the worst, what's been the best? best moment so far as you've taken pictures or video like what has been that one moment that said this is why i do this and xavier if you answer the parking lot sequence at the end of CW, <laughs> we can't be friends anymore i don't care he, he's my friend so you yeah. know you can I, say I won't talk about that just yet why please we gotta let the world see it we'll let the world see it maybe well, Can't wait to see it. it. Oh my God, please. Gotta, like, build it, right? Hey, build send, it <laughs> Xavier, send it to me. Email it to me. Don't send him anything, Xavier. He's a <laughs> man, that guy. All right, let's talk about the, the best moment. Nick, what's your best moment? Well, I don't know if anybody else could relate to this, but it's it's weird because in the moment, you don't like you don't feel like it's a big as big of a deal as it might be until after, like um it's really hard for me to pinpoint like the best moment like pertaining like an actual moment of time um it would probably have to be recently because now the crowds are back um there was a match between josh alexander and matt fitchett um it was at aw's pay-per-view um the one they just had uh it's called crush and destroy little plug it's on fight on the replay and high spots um, so it was a 20 minute time limit draw. The crowd went fucking nuts. I mean, I, my hair with the, on my arms was standing up and I never felt anything like that. That was probably the best moment just because like I was, I actually like lived it. And it's really hard to like live in the moment when you're like trying to shoot because you're worried about capturing everybody else's moments. Like you're not worried about yourself. You know, you just got to make sure you're out of the way, but the best moment is probably the fact that I'm about, I like I'm gonna be in um, this month's issue of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Um, oh, wow. Three of my three of my photos are gonna be featured in um, Ellie Catch. Is, Ellie Catch is doing and having an article written about her. Uh, so three of my photos from like an AEW shows will be featured in that. So that's definitely the best moment because. Um, it's something that I can take to like my family and like, they might not understand wrestling, but they understand what a magazine is. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like how big of a deal it is to like be, cause it's not, it's hard to also explain like um, how like uh, important PWI is to someone who's not a wrestling fan. Cause it's like, Oh, it's just a stupid wrestling magazine, but like, it's not, it's like um, the but it, of wrestling magazines. Yeah. But like, it didn't even really hit me until I seen like the digital article because I knew I was going to be in it 
But then I seen it and I was like, like one of my promo pictures has its own page. Like the whole page is like my promo picture. And it's just like, I teared up. And that's the only time it's ever happened. And it's just, you know, it's kind of unreal to like be, to see myself. And cause I'm not one to toot my own horn. I don't like patting myself on the back. I'm really anal and I'm a perfectionist and I am, I don't ever feel proud like of myself, I guess, because like I always strive to do better so that that this one thing like i actually like was able to like take in and like be proud of myself so that's pretty cool all right that's awesome what a what a description that that's uh that's a really cool thing uh missy what about you um i'm like kim i i'm a perfectionist and i'm 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 my worst critic where i'm constantly going through pictures like oh i could have gotten better i could have gotten this but i'd say the second i hit post on when I upload everything and seeing the um, the reactions and the love I get from it. Um, two of the pictures I've taken, uh, wrestlers have put onto their t-shirts and sold them. So when I see, I look in the crowd and I see fans are wearing t-shirts with a picture I took on it, it's like, all right, I did good. So, um, and another thing is being able to be ringside and having guys that I sat in the crowd as a fan to watch, and now I'm inside capturing that. That's like a good, good feeling. That's awesome. I mean, your your work is uh is absolutely great, and uh, you deserve all the accolades you get. Uh, Big D, tell me, brother, what's your big moment? You've got a lot. I mean, I, I I've, <laughs> I've, I've seen you you put up some really cool things. What do you got? What's your what's your moment? Uh, honestly, best moment as far as me doing videography, I would have to say it would be getting the opportunity to be on the Warrior Wrestling live stream. Not this year, last year during the pandemic of the uh, Stadium Series, the last show. Because honestly, yeah, I just started there? out that year. That was like only what about six, eight months since yeah, my beginning. I saw you. I saw you out there with that. Yeah, game. I didn't know you were there. Yeah, I was I there. there. Hey, I think we talked about this. <laughs> this was before times. You were right, right, right. six feet away from when uh, wasn't it? Right, yeah. Uh, was it? Didn't ego kill Basil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> no, uh, no, ego. Uh, he killed Martin. That's who he killed. Yeah, killed Martin. Oh no, yeah, it was Martin. Yeah, yeah, with the yeah, kendo Martin stick. Kendo. I'm like, oh, damn, that, that's, that's hardcore. A that, that's a hardcore cameraman right over there. I thought Martin. that was a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Nah, um, but yeah, like considering my skill level at the time, I felt like, you know, this is a huge opportunity because like at the time I've only done Chicago style wrestling, Bruce City wrestling uh, in Wisconsin and Asylum Wrestling Revolution in Indiana. I'm thinking like, well, I'm, I'm just nobody. I, I just started. My stuff's not that good. So, I mean, they needed the extra help. So I just got on and next thing you know, people are like, hey, man, your footage is pretty good on the stream. And I would go on Twitter and I would see somebody, oh, it's a shame the cameraman couldn't run to Joey Janela getting that <laughs> flip off the ladder spot through the table. Hey, we were tied hey, up over there. Like the we had cords. Table. We're sorry. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> cat. That's a cat. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that, would, that would be honestly best one because that just shows that we can only go up from here if we just keep at it, just keep working on our craft. We can only go up because the you know, sky is the limit. I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, like I said, I have uh, I have watched more than my share of your video clips. And uh, you know, everybody really just enjoys what you do. So uh, you you'd right, the sky is the absolute limit. And then we go to Xavier, who's uh, who's uh, photo spectacular, his video spectacular uh, can be seen on Fight and Amazon Prime. Uh, I, I, that has to be at least somewhat of a proud moment, but you know, what, what's your magic moment as far as we're, you know, let, you know, Nick captured, everybody has had their own, uh, you know, put their spin on this. What's Xavier's spin on this? Uh, I think my, uh, I, I was, I'll talk about two, maybe, uh, the first one would be like when I first, uh, got to like editing the full show for Berwin championship wrestling that first time. Cause uh, it was it was neat. I was like, oh wow, like I'm about to, I'm about to do this. Like, you know, I just edit the show, no biggie. But it was cool to me because I was like, I've watched so much wrestling and I used to play the wrestling games all the time. 
and like even in the backyard wrestle with my my brothers and cousins all the time so now to like be doing wrestling with video stuff like i had always liked the two but never thought of like combining them so i was like oh it's pretty neat so like hopefully this like you know looks cool and they want me to come back or whatever because that was like the first time ever like editing a full show and that was that that was its first time where I, I felt really cool and good about what was going on and then i think the second time would be like uh when John Bullard, uh, he sent, he's the owner of Chicagoland Championship Wrestling. He sent me a screenshot of the show being on Amazon Prime. Okay. And then uh, where it's, uh, it says like director and then it says my name, Xavier Camacho. So I was like, ooh, okay. I was like, damn. It's, it's like one of those things where it's kind of tangible where you can like show, I showed that to like my dad, you know, my family, like, oh, look, like, you know, and Amazon Prime directed by Xavier Camacho. So like, it, it seems cool like it, 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 you know it's something you can put on a resume more than the, uh a lot of some of the other shows they put out like uh square circle megastars they're pretty dope because they let the matches go on to youtube it's like anyone can catch up with if they missed it they can just watch it on youtube right there so but um other than just being like oh yeah like you can find all this stuff on youtube now it's like oh yeah now it's on amazon prime or shooting with a a pro aw pro being like oh yeah you know on fight tv the the uh uh the entrance cam and the ring cam that's me right there so you can see me when it switches to the other camera so those moments are kind of neat where it's like that's like tangible stuff where you can show that to people like look i'm doing that like you know like it's not just like oh i'm just going to wrestling like it's you know you're working in it so it's fun to be able to like say i work in wrestling now so it's like it's a dream in its own way so really nice really neat you guys are all the very best at what you do. And I got a lot of heat today on social media. Well, why didn't you pick this person to come? Why didn't you get this person? Why, 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 why? Uh, I, I picked you guys very specifically uh, because I've had a chance to not only watch your work, but I've had a chance to watch you work. And, you know, these are things, you know, that are personal to me because, you know, I wanted to bring in people that I respected and not that I don't respect, you know, everybody that does this, but I watch how hard you guys work at your craft. And I, I watch the good things you do uh, for CSW, for CCW. Uh, and, and those promotions wouldn't be as cool as they are without the work you do. Uh, so, you know, there, I mean, you know, we could have had, I could have asked Martin to come here. I could have asked Basil, uh, you know, these are guys that, that, you know, they get plenty of adulation uh, for what they do, but I feel like, you know, what you guys do for us, uh, really, I really wanted it to, to pay the tribute to. Uh, it's closer. They're, they're, they, these are the people. And they're that all interconnected. To we see uh, on a fairly regular basis. These are the people. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, I saw, the comments. Um, and I just think, you know, it's unfair. Everybody, everybody wants their moment to shine. So uh, why not let uh, this group have their moment to shine? Uh, because there is, it's, it's per first of all, it's our damn show people. So, <laughs> oh, damn well. Um, second of all, these are people that we have to work with on a regular basis. And that guess what? They do awesome work. You know, it, it it's funny because again, this whole show. So now I'm rewinding everything in my head. And it's like, where would we be? And I just mean this on a, I'll just put a plain independent level. Where would we be if it wasn't for these guys and gal? And that's, you know, you're exactly right, Red. The, each one of these people that I'm looking at right now, Nick, Missy, Xavier, and Derek, at one point or another has given me something that I have looked at and go, wow, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. They actually made me look like a professional. They actually made me look really good. Uh, whether it be, the and that takes a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's no lie. That's no lie. 
Um, but at, at one point, each of your works have impacted me on a deeply, profoundly personal level because you've made me look better than I am. And uh, that's a skill, that's an art, and that's an amazing talent that I could not respect more. I got one more question before we let you guys go and before we end this show. Uh, I'm going to start with Nick and I'm going to go around the room. Um, where would you like to go if you could go anywhere and do anything with this? I mean, you guys are all doing great work now for great places, but what's the end game for uh, camera guy gimmick? Steep question. Um, because I don't even know. See, you're uh, the sacrificial lamb because now all these guys <laughs> they got time to think about it. You got the answer. Well, I'm going to you, hot shot. All right, well, here, so like obviously everybody like well, I would assume most people want like big time, you know, like AEW, WWE, New Japan, whatever. I don't really care about that, like in this in in the sense of like I would be doing this re like regardless, like um, I would love to go like bigger and bigger and bigger, but like I would also love to like shoot freelance, and I would also love to shoot galley, and I would also love to shoot um, glory pro or shimmer or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I literally want to do. And it's my, my girlfriend tells me all the time, I love you, babe, um, that I spread myself too thin because I do, because I also do like AAW's graphics, like the match cards and the posters and all that. And I You're do fantastic, by the way. I do Zello Pros also. And, you know, but I want to do yeah, more. Zello I always want to do hear me. I, I've begged Zello Pro. They're like, nah, you suck. They won't, I do their graphics and they won't even let me come take pictures. So, like, <laughs> don't worry about it. But, um, <laughs> I just want to do more like, and I don't, it doesn't really matter to me like where I, where it is. Like, so if any promoters watching this and they want like an extra lens, come my way. I'm not that expensive and I'll give you good work. <laughs> well, we'll certainly give you a hell of an endorsement. Uh, Missy, what about you? Where, <laughs> where's your end game? Where, where would you like to go? What would you like to do? You know what? I, I hate to piggyback off Nick, but I'm I'm kind of like him. I, yeah, WWE, that's cool. AEW, yeah, you, you made it. But I I like the indies. I have more. I think I'd have more fun sticking with indies. And I know I've worked with Xavier. I love working with you. It's always a blast. Um, but I would love to work more with the rest of like the other two you've got on here and some other camera videographers. I like, I would love to pick more of their brains. Um, and as far as for promotions, um, I would love to be there at Warrior. I would love to one day work at Freelance. I would love to help out with AEW. Um, I would love to just anywhere, you know, everywhere and anywhere. You know, I, this is, I love just capturing the pictures. So, yeah. <laughs> And, well, hey, that's absolutely perfect. And uh, you can tell that you love it by looking at the pictures that you shoot because they're phenomenal. Okay, Big D, what about you? What's what? Where, where does where does Ring Film Dude want to hang his hat? Man, yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be another Echo. <laughs> just, just to be honest, see, see, Nick. I mean, everybody's. I mean, everybody. Gave everybody, the answer. Right? <laughs> Everybody would think big time. I mean, sure. Yeah. WWE, AEW, New Japan, that would be pretty cool. That would be a pretty sweet experience. Honestly, I'll hold impact over all of them if I ever got a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But True. I don't really, I don't really know where I would hang my hat. I'm just, you know, going with the opportunities that I'm given and I'm gonna try my best to knock them out of the park. Speaking of opportunities, I'm actually gonna have an opportunity to work with you two guys, Xavier and Nick. Uh, oh, July 9th. Oh, finally, huh? <laughs> AAW yeah. Pro, United We Stand. Hard Good. Cam right over here, baby. <laughs> I plugged you. I fucking plugged you enough. <laughs> I mentioned Dan, too. Friends. I, yeah, love I mentioned Dan, too. I was like, hey, bro, like, uh, like you should definitely look into dudes. And I know Nick was over there saying stuff, too. So that's yeah. Well, it's actually, 
Trent, like he's a producer at AEW. Like he told, he actually like told me himself, like, oh, so like you know, like the ring film dude. I'm like, yeah, like you know, he does stuff at CSW. He's like, oh no, he's really, really good. And I'm like, dude, hey, because remember I told you at CSW, I'm yeah. like, yeah, dude, you should reach out. Like, yeah, well, that's good, man. I'm proud of you, I'm, and I'm happy to happy to work with you. Honestly, it's it's full circle because AAW was actually the right. first independent wrestling company I've been to. So it's full yeah. circle right there. Nice. Amazing. Cool. All right. Uh, Xavier, you've already been on Amazon Prime with your work and you're listed as a director. So that's a, that's a pretty lofty thing that you've got going already. Uh, where would you like to take it? For sure. So uh, I feel like I, I feel like I kind of have two goals right now. Like, um. Uh, so the first one was creating pro wrestling shoots as an Instagram to be basically like an online resume. So like I wanted to work professionally for WWE or AEW. Oh, AEW wasn't really like a thing yet. I wasn't really thinking about that. So WWE was like the idea, right? Like to do some sort of like video work for them, like not, not necessarily interviewing the people backstage, but like recording those backstage segments and stuff like that. And they're like uploading to their YouTube and curating that page or whatever. Um, but I was like, okay, I have no experience in any of this. What do I do? So when I go, when I went to their like uh, requirements on their job pages, uh, that's those were like ideas of like, okay, I need to like know how to you know communicate with wrestlers. I need to know how to schedule stuff. I need to know how to like uh, set up blah blah blah. You know, so like I use those bullet points as like things to apply to pro wrestling shoots. So like professionally, I would still like to kind of like end up uh, working with. AEW, Impact, WWE, on some sort of like video level where I can like go and record those backstage segments. So that would be like a dream come true for sure. And uh, I know Jeremy from Swerve Video, he's like one of those guys who made it. So I'm like, man, that's like an inspiration right there. Cause I'm like, he made it from Chicago to there and I want to do that. So it's possible, you know? <laughs> and, you know, we would shoot at Freelance. Uh, I would be shooting with Val Capone while she's doing interviews. Swerve would be right there by the uh, ring. So it's like, you know, we're like working together, bam, he's there, you know, it's attainable, you know, you know, you can do it. And then, uh, but also a second goal would, would be with pro wrestling shoots itself, like as, I don't know if like a company eventually or something, but definitely like keep it growing because I love working with all the different like indies and like being able to just like meet wrestlers and work with each other and help those dreams come true with each other where we can like maybe uh, put them on different like platforms so that they can get seen other compared to like not being able to be seen as much because then it just gives them like more uh eyes you know so as uh, i would like to that for that to grow and maybe you know develop teams so eventually you can have you know on one weekend you could hit hit up more than one show so you know a pro wrestling shoots itself would have teams that can go out hit up more maybe more than states eventually and be like a real like thing and like a real like media company so that's like an idea i have for that aside from like wanting to do like the camera work for one of the big ones. But those are two goals I have for myself. Those are all great. And uh, you know, like I said, uh, we picked you very specifically for very specific reasons, almost selfish reasons uh, because you mean the world to us. And uh, you know, I've never heard anybody say anything but great things about all of your work. Uh, you guys are great to work with. Uh, you're great people. The product you put out there is absolutely top notch. And uh, if you can make a 51 year old idiot look like a professional, uh, then I think you could do anything. And uh, we appreciate you for what you do. And I think people need to recognize how important you are because without you, wrestling just isn't quite as cool as it is right now in 2021. Red, any final thoughts for our panel? Well, um, Never met a camera he doesn't love. Of course, of course, of course. Um, hell, because sometimes you just have to, again, live for the moment. Uh, and like I told you guys and girls before, um, that's what life is to me. Um, it's funny because everybody's, the majority of everybody's answer was, you know, and when I started this journey, um, I always said, that's not where I want to go. Uh, so uh, I've been loving this, you know, forever. Uh, Xavier, I, it's, it's, it's ironic, the same feeling you got 
when you uh, saw director in, in your name, when the credits roll, um, I'll never forget um, my ex-wife did not. So I used to uh, shoot a TV show uh, for a company um, and she didn't believe that every week I would travel <laughs> and go shoot and she because the show and it came on real TV uh, it came on uh, the U mm -hmm. or the U2 but it came on we had a crappy time slot 2 o'clock in the morning okay. so she not necessarily never, prime time <laughs> right. So she, you know, after a while, she started really thinking that I was doing something else. Right. And it wasn't until like I had to make sure I recorded it because the crazy part is they'll tell you it's coming on at two o'clock and then you hit record on the DVR and then you wake up the next morning and there's a damn infomercial playing <laughs> in the damn time slot. Well, and it was like, what the hell, people? And eventually, so I caught one of the episodes and I played it for. Her. And my proudest moment was my daughters were standing there and it said producers and they saw my name. And like, just the, the way they lit up with pride was like, and so, of course, I'm a big old baby, so I cry because, but follow your dreams, guys. Uh, if, if this is, is where you want to go or, you know, just enjoy this time, you know, because again, you might, you know, you don't know who's looking. You don't know. Uh, and that's the crazy part, you know. Uh, I've been doing this long enough to know, yeah, the people up north are watching. Yeah, the people down south are watching. And the crazy part is everybody talks. <laughs> you know, nobody ever mentions that. People talk because this guy knows somebody from that company and that company knows somebody. And people talk, you know, and think about it. You know, Derek, that's how you, you got the opportunity that's coming up, right? You know, both of these guys, you know, have been talking you up, you know, and, and clearly your body of work has been saying something. So now you get to, you know, join them. You know, I wonder why I've never, oh, I, I remember why we never worked there. Mm, that's another story for a different day. Um, but I'd like hey, to hear that one. <laughs> they, they, uh, they didn't want the soul touches at the time because the soul touches were everywhere. That's what I was told. So, you know, we were everywhere uh, and rightfully so we deserved it. And uh, unless you gonna pay me uh, to not work nowhere else, sorry, I, I, I got to eat. <laughs> Just, so, but keep doing what you guys doing. Don't let anybody or anything stop you um you know some days will be great some days will be rough uh but again you four have made at least an impact on me and steve's life no doubt uh so thank you again from the bottom of our hearts uh you make us look good uh and that's, that's all. I mean, you make us look good. I mean, hell, you know. Um, what more, what better way to show who I am than Missy showing me and my foot on the, somebody's throat? Handful of times. That, we're not talking about your match. Listen, we're yeah, going to... Let's talk about that uh, trunk thing. We're not let's talking talk about that. the trunk. No <laughs> trunk. I tried. We're going to end this. Can I say one thing? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, you like, gonna show like, that. Like, ah, not that though. Uh, I was gonna say for like, for like people watching, like if you ever like want to get involved too, like with anything wrestling, like maybe have it be media or just being a part of the team somehow, I would recommend like trying to see if companies have street teams. 
because Major League Wrestling, MLW, like I was a part of the Chicago street team when like the events were coming. And that's how I was first even able to kind of get my feet wet with wrestling at all, like with like a live event. So I would go around, we would post up posters around neighborhoods, telling people at like restaurants and stores like that the event was coming. Uh, I would, and then we like showed up early to set up all the chairs and stuff like that. So you can like meet people that way and just start gaining trust from people. Cause like, like we talked about the problem with like too many people want to like get the media with their phones and stuff. And even if you don't have a camera and you have a phone, like make the most of that, but gain trust from promoters and, and, you know, the people by like showing initiative that I'm here to help. I'm here to like, want to, you know, be a part of the team and stuff. And the best way you can is like maybe asking if you can start off on a street team and then maybe if you can gain some trust, they'll let you like take clips by the ring or something with your phone or your camera or whatever. And you can kind of just get involved that way. So there's always ways to just like communicate with everybody. And I think that's like the best way to kind of get your feet wet and wet in the door of it all. Perfect. Perfect. Cause big shout out to Jamie, uh, uh, a good friend and fan of ours. Uh, and over, I say the past year, uh, Jamie's uh, photos have gotten way better. And that's only because he did exactly what you said, Xavier. He uh, talked to the promoters uh, and he's uh, willing to help out. And, uh, you know, he's been taking pics and, and his, his work is, has gotten 10 times better. Uh, and maybe one day, maybe he'll be giving you guys a run for your money uh, filming. Uh, but, you know, you guys at this point, Steve was 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 on the money tonight to bring you four on here tonight. Uh, I don't feel like it's a waste of time. You guys gave us uh, way more than what we needed. I didn't hear have to hear Steve talk all fucking night. Uh, cause then I want to put a bullet in my brain oh. most nights. <laughs> hey, all I'm going to say is you wonder why he got his ass whooped, whether it was Chicago land or Chicago style. Uh -oh. It's all right. It's all right. The, the empire <laughs> will indeed strike back. Uh, you Nick, can find did you say how the movie ended. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting, I am not getting ready. You don't die. I'm not, well, maybe, you never know. Uh, these people are professionals uh, at the highest level. Camera guy gimmick, uh, take action photography, pro wrestling shoots, uh, ring film dude. Uh, you can find their work on social media. You can find their work. Uh, at some of your favorite promotions, AAW, CCW, CSW, to name just a few, Warrior Wrestling. These people work in multiple places because they're multi-talented and they put out some of the greatest product going today. So get in touch with them. If you're a promoter and you want to get your, your, your promotion uh, going the right way with good camera work, good cinematography and good photos, these are the four people to contact. But they work for us first. That's right. Nick, <laughs> Derek, Xavier, and Missy, we are honored that you took time out of your schedules to, to talk to us. Uh, you have been as entertaining as I hoped you'd be, because even though you give us your eye uh, with your talent, uh, you're still very engaging people, uh, whether it be me eating uh, Danish in Xavier Camacho's basement while recording <laughs> or me getting birthday videos from Derek or me getting lightsaber shots from Nick or me getting uh, shots talking to Michael Allen from Missy. Uh, each one of these people has had the ability to make me look like a professional. And if they can make me look like a professional, imagine what they can do for you. I couldn't endorse these four more on behalf of the Power Hour, myself and C-Red. Uh, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for your efforts. Uh, they do not go unnoticed. You are the true heroes of, uh, I don't, what is he? <laughs> no, oh, no, wow. he doesn't do that. Oh, no. wow. Derek, um, season finale, all the way to end it. Rewind that. He planned that. Yes. Oh yeah. Hey. Gotta give you one time. <laughs> Gotta get you. Rewind it. <laughs> oh. 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 Yes. That's one more. <laughs> hey, 
you know what? Eric, Derek, if I see that on social media tomorrow, you and I Derek, are going to have words. You are awesome. <laughs> you are awesome. See, Red day. will share that. Oh, come on. I'm I don't need tell this. You why I don't need awesome. this. This is the season finale, right? And last <laughs> season, he got his ass whooped. And I was mad that, guess what? Because last season, he died. And I was mad that he wasn't going to get hurt and get his ass kicked to end this season for now. But you, Derek, have just won the award. Steve <laughs> got his ass <laughs> Some point night, in this show, don't hire any of these people. <laughs> I, don't know who these people I don't know who they are. Exactly. You hear that? You hear that, Xavier? You might as well show the footage, Xavier. On, I know you got it. on behalf of the Power it. Hour, I know we will you got see it. you next season right here on the Johnners Podcast Network. I'm Steve. That's C-Red. These are the greatest camera people in the world. On behalf of all of us, have a great 4th of July and good evening.